So we're measuring the bushing that goes inside the barrel before we do our indication. And then we measure the bushing for the reamer to make sure it's within where we need to be. The head that we're using isn't like traditional heads. The head allows us to do both radial and coaxial alignments right there at the head. So rather than traditionally using a chuck, like a four jaw in the front and four jack screws in the rear or what some people call a spider, what that does is as you clamp in the front and clap in the back to adjust the barrel until finally you have it, the bore itself riding straight, requires a lot of pressure from the rear screws and the jaws of the chuck. What we do is we're holding the barrel only by the first two inches of the shank. The head that we're using allows us to tilt and pan, as well as adjust our radial runouts at the same time. And what this does is it keeps us from flexing the barrel. No matter how big and stiff your barrel is, if you're torquing on it, at each end, you are deflecting the barrel just slightly. Now you'll hear a lot of gunsmiths talking about, well, that guy cuts a crooked chamber, or this guy cuts a crooked chamber. The truth of the matter is, we were all cutting chambers that could not be duplicated. When you take your barrel in and out of a stressed position like that, it's almost impossible to get it back in the lathe the same way twice. This system allows us to dial in one time, one time only and hold that position while we're working on the barrel without introducing any type of deflection back here. This gives us a much straighter chamber and a much truer alignment. struggling with it.
Moving on to the chambering process, notice the wash system. A pneumatic pump is delivering 300 PSI of a proprietary water-based coolant down the bore center. What this is doing is removing any and all debris from the flights of the reamer, ensuring that we're not putting any type of scratching inside of your chamber and throat. To the end user, this means no more fire lapping to remove tool marks out of the throat. The overall finish and the results of this system are a chamber that actually sports a cleaner profile than the barrel's lap itself. For final inspection, an endoscope is placed in the end of the barrel. What we're looking for here is any kind of imperfection, whether it be caused from us or the barrel manufacturer themselves. The barrel will be looked at from end to end, ensuring that the chamber is free from any defect and the rifling is pristine and the lap is consistent all the way from one end to the other. This barrel looks to be in good shape. It will now get boxed up and head out to the customer.